Welcome to Our Jewish Roots with insightful Bible teaching from Israel by Dr. Jeffrey Seid. This week, a mutiny in the palace leads to the king of Israel, who was the worst of the worst. Coming up on Kings and Kingdoms. So glad you've joined us today. I'm David Hart. I'm Kirsten Hart. I'm Jeffrey Seif. And I'm aware most people watch TV, they want to get their mind off their problems. We'll do it today by looking at somebody else's. <laughs> this world is a mess. It is, but our world is a mess too. Yes, we're going to look at political intrigue and really bad characters. And we have political intrigue and bad characters. There's nothing new under the sun, is it's there? It's in the book. It's right there. See what we can learn. Right. Professor Seif is in Israel right now teaching. Let's go there now. I come from a culture that places a premium on following commands for working under command structure. I remember one time at a dinner um, I pointed out to my wife, you see that man there? That's Lieutenant Leverance. This is when I was a firefighter. I said, every time you see him, be nice to him because my life is in his hands. Most people are smart enough to run from fire. Some are dumb enough to run to him. And I'm going to follow orders when I go there. Same is true in police culture. You follow orders. And things can become inherently dangerous, but you work under command. Insubordination is a judge to be a problem. Mutiny is the unforgivable sin. I mention that because we're entering into a world where mutiny was the order of the day. Well, I'm leaning up against sticks and bricks right now, bricks particularly, but there's sticks too. You don't see them. Uh, when this fortress was built, uh, the architects responsible for it didn't follow the plans associated with it, with the net result is they were killed, they were beheaded. This goes back to an Islamic day. These, uh, these, the, these forts round about here are built atop the ruins of, of David's fortification. Actually, there's been a lot of up and down. In military culture, people know about following orders, but sometimes things get out of hand. I mention that because I'm interested in someone named Omri. It's a word meaning my darling, my loved one. But as we'll see when I open up the book, he is not very lovely. Omri is a little known personality. There's not much said about him. When you look in biblical literature, he's the, uh, the progenitor of the horrible. That is to say, Israel's, the northern kingdom's most infamous king comes from him, Ahab. And people know the story of Ahab and Jezebel. Here I want to look and see how the apple of Ahab didn't fall far from the tree of Omri, my beloved, who wasn't very lovely. We see in uh, 1 Kings chapter 16 that he came to power through mutiny. He, he seized an opportunity. I think there's something within the males of the species. Part of it's testosterone driven. We're competitive. We can be assertive. I get that. You add a sinful nature to that, what Hebrews call uh, Lashan Hara, the evil inclination. And this drive for success can get out of hand in reasonably short order. Uh, the author of James in the Newer Testament says, what causes wars among you? It's passions that are at war in your members and they propel people forward in not a very good way. Well, we're told here in the 16th chapter of 1 Kings that Omri seized a moment. In verse 16, Arva yam kol Yisrael et Amri. 
and all Israel made Amri described then as a Sar Tseva Al Israel, who was captain of the host. That is, he's a military leader. He's not a king, but he's not content just to be a military leader, to be a captain. No, that he seizes an opportunity and he usurps. It says that it was then Sar Tsirva Al Yisrael Bayom Hahu Bamachana that they uh, they made him king then over all of Israel. Short story, short reign. There's political intrigue then. They make him king in the in the military camp. Someone else contends for it. They fight. Someone dies. He has hold of power. It underscores for my money how precarious it is when people seize power. And I think of it in antiquity here, they fought for it. It's with, 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 with knives and spears. Today, happily, when there's a power vacuum, an election comes up, people fight with words. Sometimes the words are very dastardly, uh, but uh, better with words than swords. Here at the end of the day, they seize it and they do bad things with it. I mention that because when we read on in verse 25, once in power, uh, the author tells us, And we hear this over and again, that Amri did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, and that he dealt wickedly, that he was just a tragedy, that he did evil in the sight of the Lord and dealt wickedly above all. He was a bad actor. I mention that the term because when I, when I speak of an actor or a bad actor, I'm not talking about movies. Actually, in police culture, someone who breaks the law is referred to as a bad actor. And the reason why it is in police culture, and I have that as another life, by the way, another world, uh, the arrests aren't made on the basis of thoughts. People can think whatever they want and basically say whatever they want. It's actions that are problematic. And the way this man came to power, the actions associated with it were problematic. And what he does in power is problematic. I mention that because as we look around and we see how people jockey for position, they're looking for power, I want you to be thinking about those that are more noble at the end of the day. Uh, that uh, people can be deceitful with the words, they can be manipulative, people can be stealthy, and that's how Omri came to power. Uh, it's unacceptable to my way of thinking, and uh, one would expect better from biblical people in the, in the biblical drama. But interestingly, the Bible gives voice to the fact how people come to power in all the wrong ways. You get all the wrong people coming to power in all the wrong ways, and the effects are devastating. Said all that to say this, when you have opportunity, and we have it all the time, as in our democracy, the world cycles, and people go to the ballot box and they vote for a leader, not with a sword, but with a lever. I want you to be looking for people whom you construe to be the more noble, to be the more virtuous. I want you similarly to look for people that seem to reflect biblical faith and virtue. I say it over and again, but it's, an important, it's a story that's told over and again as we go into the annals of biblical literature and we explore the story of kings and kingdoms. Let's take pains to ensure that we get the right kind of leaders in the right kind of place. There's an old saying that behind every good man is a good woman. Now, I believe that personally. My wife, Barry, I say of her, she's the way, the truth, and the wife. I wonder if when I get to heaven, the Lord's going to discipline me a little on that based on the fact that he was, uh, that's a verse that's talking about him. But the point is, is I adore her and I follow her. She has an influence on me. So why am I telling you about my wife? Well, I want to pivot to another story. It's not only true that behind every good man is a good woman. Uh, there's a story here today behind a bad man is a really, really bad woman. Now, uh, a Hebrew king, Ahab, who's going to marry a woman named Jezebel. You already know you're in trouble if you have a woman whose name is Baal. 
We read, by the way, her father's name was Eth Baal, that is, with Baal. You know you're marrying into the wrong family. And I mention that because I'm coming to you from a site that was built up uh, as a, some kind of replication of the tabernacle of Moses. And right behind me, there's a hill. Uh, they built altars to Baal all over the northern kingdom of Israel, Samaria, dozens of them. It's tragic here. You have the pretense of Israelite religion, and that just leads to the disregard of it entirely as evidenced by a place we're going to look at a little more closely, and we're going to open up the Word to do just that. Come with me. Let's look at the Bible yesterday and see how it might apply today. Come on. There's something rather tasteless about talking about a guy's wife. I get that. But I'm not saying anything that the Bible doesn't say and more to tell you the truth. And the question here, to my way of thinking, is you have a leader. I don't care if it's a king, a president, whatever. The question is, who's advising that person? And what kind of worldview are they drawing from when tendering advice? That was important in antiquity. It's important in modernity. The Bible straight up seems to represent Ahab as something of a simpleton. His wife, however, was very, very spirited, and she was made of all of the wrong stuff, and it had a bad consequence. I'm looking in chapter 16 of 1 Kings. I'm reading it in, in, in my version. We're told in verse 31, Vayikach Isha, and he took a wife, Et Isabel, that is Jezebel, Bat Et Baal. Now, the daughter, as I mentioned just on the other side of this uh, shrine here where I'm sitting, it doesn't look like a shrine, it just looks like a bunch of rocks, but uh, uh, they built uh, altars to Baal all over Samaria. I don't mind sitting on one. You know, I don't like desecrating holy sites, but this isn't very holy to my way of thinking. Once upon a time, people thought it was because of this woman. I don't know why a Hebrew king is marrying someone with the name Baal. I've made the point. I don't want to beat it to death. But we're told that he married her. And before you get out of the verse that he follows her and worships Baal, it can happen. My wife personally has a lot of leverage over me. I just worship the ground she walks on. I've already said that. And uh, who's in your inner world? It's important when we look in verse 33, I'll give it to you in mine and translate. Rava Yosef, Achav, La'asot, Lahakim, Et Adonai Elohei Yisrael. This Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel. Now that's not something you want to do. I wonder, by the way, personally, to what extent God is provoked by executive decisions that have made in judicial and executive and congressional branches in the United States of America. I think uh, when, when, when I look over history, I think this, there's things that are odious personally. Well, here, that, never mind today, yesterday, we're told that this man, influenced as he was by that woman, did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, Mikol Malkei Yisrael Asher Hoyu Lefonov, then all the kings of Israel that were before him. In other words, the worst of the worst of the worst, and it was plenty bad before he got there. I mention that because when I think of business in my own country, I, I, I think there's been plenty done that provokes the God of Israel. I'm looking for a turnaround. I'm looking for change. And uh, I'm not, don't construe that as a dissatisfaction. Uh, I mean, th this program airs on different times in years to come, and I don't know who's going to be the president then and when, uh, who's going to lead. But the point is, 
that uh, one of the things that I'm hoping for in my waning days is for America to be on a trajectory to recover lost religion. I mention that because here I am uh, disrespecting a site to Baal. There's some quasi-Jewish Hebrew site not far from here, a facsimile of the Mishkan mosaic worship space, but that was just a fake, fake Jews, fake news. But I'm coming to you from the Holy Land here in a major city in the northern kingdom of Israel that broke away. Uh, I'm interested in what's over yonder hill, Jerusalem. I want to see people turn back to the God of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I believe, by the way, that Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, is the principal turnaround agent. With the net result, as a result of experiencing him, people can get good government in their own head. It can affect their own lives. They can utilize that influence to be life in the world and light in the world and change the world. Let it be so. Our resource this week, the Grafted In Necklace. Wearing this lovely sterling silver rendition of a classic messianic symbol shows you recognize the Jewish roots of your Christian faith and stirs curiosities and witness opportunities with this tribute to light, the Lord, and abundant love. For this resource and more, call 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at levitt.com. If you only watch us on television, you're missing additional content available only on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can always visit our website, which is home base for all of our ministry activities and information. There you can sign up for our free monthly newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit the online store. You can sign up for a tour of Israel and Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. I am not ashamed to admit this. I love social media. It's true. I do. <laughs> and, and the reason is because it connects us with so many people across the world. And that's what we want to do through our social media sites here on Our Jewish Roots is connect with you. And right now I want to connect with you and say a special thank you for keeping us on the air and keeping this ministry going. It's all because of our viewers and donations sent to this ministry. We take the good news around the world because of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God deserves your praise. He deserves our praise. Our Hebrew lesson today is all about praise and worship. Let's go to Sarah Lieberman now. <laughs> Shalom Chavarim, welcome to our series on Worship Words in Hebrew. I am so excited as a worship leader to be able to show you the beauty of the Hebrew language when it comes to this word praise. Because so many times in our Bible, in English, when it says the word praise, in Hebrew there's an entirely different word. Today's word is the word levarech, which comes from the root word bracha, which means blessing. Now, you might find that interesting when worship comes into play with the word blessing. But if you look at the book of Job, Job says this incredible statement. He says, God has given, God has taken away, let the name of the Lord be praised. Well, in Hebrew it actually says, let the name of the Lord be blessed. You see, blessing the Lord is something that we do that blesses His heart. It's willingly offering ourselves to the Lord in any and every situation, no matter what is going on. The word blessing in Hebrew comes from the root of ni, which also implies kneeling down before the Lord in reverence, in thanksgiving, in surrender. So when we say this, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, that word again is barchi, levarech. I kneel down before the Lord. I worship you. I bless you, Lord. I want to bless your heart. will be with me every day. And I dwell in the house of my Lord forevermore. I know my own and my own know me. Though the voice of a stranger may call, the Father 
Beautiful Messianic music by Marty Getz. Thank you, Marty. Thank you, Marty. Marty's been a friend of our ministry for a long time, as well as Avi Lipkin. And Jeff recently met up with them to have a conversation about King Ahab and the infamous Jezebel. Here's that conversation. Avi, uh, Ahab, not so good, yes? Uh, I would say like this. He was a simpleton in his own way, and he was married to Isabel. Who well, you definitely her. married wrong. Yes, and Isabel was the daughter of the king of uh, Lebanon of that time, of Tyre. And uh, if you remember the story of Navot with his vineyard, and uh, guess what? I want that vineyard. And, uh, but he didn't know how to get it away from Navot, and so Isabel came and leave it to me. And she basically framed uh, Navot, had him killed. And that's when the uh, prophet, uh, you know, Elijah came and said, you, you killed and you inherited. In other words, they killed Navot. So he wasn't a good guy. Yeah, uh, I don't like political people that gobble and seize. Yes. We see that uh, in the geopolitical world today, don't we? Very correct. And the Bible is so valid for us today because it teaches us things that were happening in the human world uh, thousands of years ago and are happening today also. The Bible is very alive. It's not something... Uh, mythical. It's something that really happened. Yes, the, that acquisitive nature, that vile cruelty, uh, pillaging and plundering, it exists in modernity just like antiquity. A very important point in the contest between Elijah the prophet and the 450 priests of Baal, he let them go first. And he said, if, if God doesn't take your offering, then I'll do mine. And of course, God took Elijah's offering. The 450 priests of Baal were executed. They were beheaded. And so uh, the, this teaches us the, the high priests of Baal, of Baal, uh, when they were enchanting uh, the Baal to come and take their offering, and he didn't, they started cutting their foreheads with knives and bleeding. And this is the origin of the Ashura uh, self-mutilation uh, uh, ceremony of the Shiites. So the Shiite Islam has a, this ceremony going all the way back to the pagans of Lebanon. Fascinating story, a little scary, scary too, yes? Uh, indeed, uh, like I said before, the Bible shares things which on the surface you would think, oh, that happened 3,000 years ago. No, this happened today. We're looking at kings and kingdoms, right. and we're seeing uh, uh, yesterday manifest today. What a great point, good closing point. Last words, yours. Uh, we are now living in a time in which our opponents uh, are, are, I don't want to say our enemies, I hate to use the word enemies because, you know, we are supposed to love our enemies, but our enemies follow the same evil course as the enemies who were destroyed by God 3,000 years ago. And God has the victory. So we have this divided kingdom. It's like the north versus the south. and. And is one better than the other? Yeah, we don't have any divisions in our kingdom today, of Not course. It's just back then. <laughs> right. Now, we're looking at these leaders, and I'm telling you, unimpressive. I got a scorecard here. And you're gonna I say see I'm a, that. You're going to say I'm a tough teacher. You're glad you didn't have me in college. From the beginning. Saul so gets so an good. F. I mean, I was just unimpressed by him from the get-go. I loved David at the start. I didn't like his finish. Uh, Solomon, uh, I liked him at the start a little, but then, oh, my word. I mean, I just give them nice. Ds, and I think I'm gracious for that. Maybe other professors there in the audience that are watching would be a little You're more right, I'm gracious. Glad I wasn't in your class. But I'm a tough teacher. <laughs> you are. A Solomon's son, Rehoboam, was a worthless piece of human wreckage. Mm, I was F. very unimpressed. An F. F. He didn't even start off good. At least wow. his father and grandfather started right. off good. Jeroboam, I give him an F because he's the one that led uh, uh, the kingdom, uh, the northern tribes, into a rebellion. I mean, uh, Solomon's pathetic policies contributed to why there was fermenting discontent. Uh, Jeroboam was their spokesperson and leader, but it went from bad to worse under him. Omri, who follows Jeroboam, gets an F. 
<laughs> he gets an F, but and I studied Old Testament history, so did you in college. Yeah. I don't even remember his name. It's well, like a non-name. There's not a lot crazy? said about him. What do you think of this guy, Ahab? Yeah, we know about Everyone him and his wife. Everyone remember him <laughs> because of his wife. <laughs> his wife. Any, any Hebrew king that marries a woman named Jezebel with Baal as right. part of her name, you know he's married into the wrong family. But we even now we talk about people with the Jezebel spirit. I mean, yes, her well, name goes down through history. Yeah, well, that's where that Jezebel spirit thing came from. And he was rather sheepish, you know, didn't have a lot of spine leaders. You know, have to be tough. You have to stand up, and it's not always easy. But we see too much collapsing here. You know, I go for political leaders. I like some strength in all of that. I know there's imperfection. You want to get to perfection? We'll get to the last one, Jesus. We'll get to him at the end of the series. Uh, this is all God's got to work with here. We're human beings. Some perform better than others. Here we're on a bad stretch of highway, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, it's going to get better. But, but, but. Ahab reminds me of being way too sheepish. He didn't, no backbone, didn't stand up, and I didn't like that. Uh, today's kings, wasn't there a mutiny in the palace? Yeah, you know, Omri led a revolt, and that happens on a number of occasions in biblical literature. Mm. It's interesting that the Bible, for a book that's called Good News, gives a window of the bad news. You know, we're supposed to learn something from it. Right, so what is our takeaway, Professor, our quick takeaway well, for the end of this? Well, personally, I kind of, you know, gave it on the front end there. I'm looking for leaders. I don't expect perfection, but I, I need people to stand up to wickedness. And uh, Omri personified a kind of wickedness. Ahab seemed too sheepish in the face of it, thus he acquiesced to it. I want more backbone. That's good. Stand up. Stand up and be strong. Have a good backbone. I think that's a good takeaway, but a good spiritual backbone. Yes, the Hebrew word is chazak, be strong. That's a good word. Well, be strong and uh, stay strong till next week. What do you say? Look forward to seeing you again. Until then, Sha'alu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Join us right now for additional content that is only available on our social media sites, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Visit our website, levitt.com, for the current and past programs, the television schedule, tour information, and our free monthly newsletter, which is full of insightful articles and news commentary. View it online, or we can ship it directly to your mailbox every month. Also on our website is the online store. There, you can order this week's resource, or you can always give us a call at 1-800-WONDERS. Your donations to Our Jewish Roots Help us to support these organizations as they bless Israel. Please remember we depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.